Shalom and almost Shabbat Shalom. Uh, my name is Avi Lipkin and I'm home in Israel after four months uh, in the United States and Canada. And uh, my son and I, Aaron Lipkin and I, are working now on a new project, hopefully to come out with a weekly Dvar Torah, which is a, like a weekly uh, sermon on the reading, uh, according to the Jewish tradition, of the Torah. Uh, we are now reading in chapter 41 of Genesis. Uh, we're reading from the parasha, the weekly reading, Miketz. Miketz, in this, uh, in this context, refers to the end of two years. After two years, Pharaoh had a dream. And the dream was about seven cows being devoured by seven other cows. The beautiful cows are, you know, are, are devoured by the ugly, skinny cows. And then there are seven sheaves of wheat, and the seven sheaves of wheat are eaten by the ugly seven, seven uh, sheaves of wheat. And Pharaoh does not understand the dream. And Pharaoh is very disturbed. He wakes up twice. And in the Jewish tradition, when a person has a dream and twice wakes up from the same dream or variations of the same dream, it means this is God speaking. And uh, Pharaoh does not want, know what to do. And of course, we have the story of last week about the two butlers. One was the bakery butler and the other was the drinks butler. And uh, the bakery butler was guilty of uh, giving probably contaminated uh, food to the Pharaoh, he was hanged by Pharaoh, and Joseph had very correctly pr uh, predicted, again, two dreams. The, the butler had a dream, and the, uh, the, um, the one who provided the drinks and the one who provided the baked goods. And uh, Joseph very correctly predicted that the butler of the baked goods uh, was going to be hanged. Uh, probably there were flies or insects inside of the bread. Uh, which is a very, very uh, sloppy way of producing bread uh, or cake. And of course, the butler of the drinks was uh, given another chance because sometimes you can't help it when a fly flies into a drink and you're carrying the drink to Pharaoh. So that is how the rabbis have interpreted these two dreams. But again, Joseph has two dreams um, uh, interpreted of, of these two butlers, and then Pharaoh has two dreams. And uh, the butler of the drinks remembered Joseph in jail and told Pharaoh about the wondrous Joseph and the dreams that he had interpreted. And so, of course, Pharaoh wanted this advice, uh, brought Joseph out of the pit, out of the jail, and uh, brought Joseph to his court. And Joseph very, very correctly interpreted the dreams to explain that there would be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And this was indeed very prophetic because indeed that's what happened. And Pharaoh appointed Joseph over the whole kingdom as his viceroy. And Joseph indeed took care to hoard seven years of produce to tide the Egyptian people over for the seven years of famine. And it seems like there are many, many stories circulating about entire peoples or almost entire peoples who were wiped out uh, during this terrible period of famine. And anyone who wanted to survive would then have to come to Egypt uh, to receive the produce of Egypt to stay alive. And uh, later we see, of course, that uh, Jacob and uh, Joseph's brothers uh, all moved to Egypt. We're going to see this in next week's reading as well. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit about something that I know affects every Jew and every Christian, every person who believes in God. And, you know, from what I have seen in the 65 years of my life, I see that in families, there are children, some of whom are anointed, some of them blessed by God with certain talents and qualities. And then there are other children in the same families who do not have these blessings. And they're not anointed of God. Uh, and you could say even that they hate God and they rebel against God. And God has a very, very clear choice, at least as far as Jews and Christians understand this, that God has chosen that Abraham would be the father of the greatest nation, the most important nation on the face of the earth, which is the people of Israel. And uh, you all remember from a few weeks ago, we read in the Torah about Ishmael, that Ishmael was Abraham's first son. Sarah could not conceive, and so Sarah brought Hagar, Hagar, 
who was her handmaiden. Uh, hopefully, that by her bearing a child to Abraham, this would improve the possibilities of Sarah to have children. And indeed, I don't say that's the reason, but we all know that Sarah had a miracle at age 90, and she bore Isaac. And uh, Ishmael was the only son of Abraham for 13 years. And we know from Genesis 16:11 that Ishmael was a wild ass, a wild donkey. He was a warrior. He was a killer. His hand would be against everyone else's hand, and everyone else's hand would be against his hand, and he would dwell in the face of his brethren, meaning constant warfare. Uh, we see uh, later that in uh, Genesis 25, it says that Ishmael died in the face of his brethren. What do we learn from this? That those who live by the sword die by the sword. Ishmael fought his brethren. This is a prophecy which came true. And later he died in the face of his brethren. Um, the question later is to be asked. And I'm not saying anything against Muslim people. I love the Muslim people. But God did not choose Ishmael, who is the forefather of the Muslim peoples. Uh, we all see the behavior of Ishmael as being that of a wild donkey, of a warrior. Uh, Isaac was the one chosen by God. And God says many, many times, it is through Isaac your seed will be called. Uh, we see this indeed when, um, when Abraham meets the angels of the Lord and they say to him, you're going to have another son. And Abraham is a realist and he says, well, you know, it's enough for me. He doesn't say it's enough for me that Ishmael should live before you, but he was a realist. And he said, you know, it's enough for me that Ishmael should live before you. And God says, no, you will have another son. And Abraham said, well, what's going to happen to Ishmael? And God said, leave it to me. I will bless Ishmael. He'll be the father of many nations. And the question always to be asked, is God a liar or is God one who tells truth? Is God a covenant breaker or does God keep covenant? And what we see indeed later is that indeed Ishmael bears 12 sons and probably as many daughters as well, though only one is mentioned. And uh, Ishmael is the father of a very great nation. Today we call them the Arabs or the Muslims, but they are not the ones that were chosen by God. And indeed for every Jew and for every Christian, we follow the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not the God of Ishmael. Ishmael is the forefather of Islam, according to the Islamic peoples, and their God is Allah, the moon God, the war God, the sword God. Now, without dwelling too much on this question of Islam, I wanted to go into different aspects of who are the chosen children of God? Who did God really choose uh, to be the chosen lineage? The lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we may add Joseph. And the reading this coming Shabbat, which is tonight and tomorrow, we talk about Joseph. And we see later on that indeed we see that there is an enmity between Ishmael and his descendants against the, the descendants of Isaac. Later after the death of Sarah, we see that Abraham remarries, marries Keturah, and he has many children with Keturah and the concubines. And the name I think that uh, sticks out the most is Midian. And we see later the word Midianites many, many times in the Bible we see that God chooses Isaac and not Ishmael, Isaac and not Midian, or any of the other half-brothers. In the next generation, we see Esau and Jacob. And the blessing of Isaac to Esau was, you will live by the sword. And so we see that indeed Esau goes and marries the daughter of his uncle Ishmael, just as Jacob married the two daughters of his uncle Laban, Lavan. So we see a dichotomy in the family. We see that God chooses Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Ishmael and not Esau. And then bringing it down to this week's reading, we see, of course, all Jewish people today are descended from the 12 uh, sons of uh, J Jacob. But we see indeed that there is a great hatred, a great enmity against Joseph by his other brothers because of the dreams that he was having. And one of the things I've noticed, and I see this very, very much in the Jewish world and in the Christian world, when I go to churches and synagogues, and indeed you have in families children who are, uh, shall I say, saved or anointed of God in the Jewish world and in the Christian world. Uh, and on the other hand, you have children who are not anointed of God. 
And the question always is asked, who does God choose? Does he choose the anointed ones or does he choose the non-anointed ones? And here we see indeed that whoever God chooses, everyone's going to hate that person because that person is anointed of God and the other people are jealous and envious. So we say Ishmael and Midian hating Isaac. We see Esau hating Jacob. And we see the, the other 11 brothers hating Joseph. And Joseph goes through some very, very terrible punishment, basically being in jail for two years, being in Potiphar's house uh, as a prisoner, taken out of the pit and sold into slavery by whom? By his first and second cousins, the Ishmaelites and the Midianites, who hate, they knew exactly who he was. And they sold him for 20 pieces of silver to, to Potiphar. So instead of saying, oh, you are flesh and blood, you are a brother, you are a cousin, and let, releasing him and sending him home to the father, no, they took him and they sold him with great pleasure to Egypt. And the ironic conclusion of all of this is that indeed it was Joseph who saved his entire family from starvation. And Joseph saved Egypt from starvation. And Joseph saved the entire known human race at that time from starvation. Joseph was taken away from his family, taken away from his land for 20 years. And he had to be in a strange land for 20 years. He almost became Pharaoh himself. Uh, so this is a very, very unusual reading. And it shows, I would say, a very, very clear uh, blessing that we see earlier in the Bible where God says to Abraham, all the nations of the world will be blessed through Abraham's seed. And indeed, we have to ask, would it, are the nations of the world blessed through Ishmael's seed? Are the nations of the world blessed by Esau's seed? No, they're blessed by the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And indeed, uh, for Jews and also for Christians, Christians believe seven times it says in the New Testament, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It doesn't say Ishmael, Esau, or Allah. It says the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Th this is a very important message for all Jews and Christians to understand that in every family, Jewish or Christian, there are those who are chosen of God to serve him and fulfill his purposes. And with that, I want to say Shabbat Shalom, and I hope to be able to do this more in the office. This is our first taping. Thank you.